Hello everyone, how you doing? We're back and we have a new person on the stream. Calgo, who are you? Why are you here? Uh hi, I'm I'm Calgo, Caligo, however you want to pronounce it. It's all good. Um I'm here to work on some black flag stuff. Cool. Black oh, wow. flag. Um just to make sure, because I'm not always the one that streams, uh, and I'm without my co my usual stream manager, Matt. Uh, can everyone hear myself and Caligo okay? Check one, two, three. All right, I heard a I yes. A yes. So excellent. So Marvelous. for those who don't know what we're doing, um, Black Flake is Cobalt Press's. Um, new project uh it's just a project name right now they're coming up with the real name soon hopefully they're gonna call it cobalt world but i don't think they have the name yet um but it is their idea about what a D and D fifth edition compatible system could look like if imagined by one of the largest third-party publishers for D and D fifth edition uh and drop it in updating several concepts and dropping some of the old things that have been around for way too long uh and so our foundry system is somewhat the same idea as much as we love the DD fifth edition system and foundry it's six years old at this point and has a little bit of baggage just a little yeah, just a little bit calgo has worked on that system calgo uh are there one or two things you might want to change it's it's uh it's very obviously a project that was started and then added onto and added onto and added onto and as all projects go eventually you end up with something where you didn't necessarily want to be and mm -hmm. changing it is difficult yeah. right now lately they have been doing a lot of changes with data models and such but might as well start fresh and so since cobalt press started fresh with inspiration so too are we uh so our system doesn't have a lot right now uh if you haven't seen it before you're able to set up a character sheet with a variety of lineages um heritages backgrounds and get some traits such as you know a proficiency or a language from those things you can make choices um such as pick one of these tools or let's see that's language uh this one lets you pick either two additional languages or one tool proficiency or vehicle proficiency um we have support for like you know if you pick you can pick from these options we also have a fancy character builder uh where you can pick from your various uh lineages that uh, they provide or your homebrew one like the mooseborn um all very cool for character building not a lot of gameplay yet cowgill they dropped packet two what are you excited for out of packet two bells spells bells most first and foremost uh everything interesting in fifth edition happens with spells so i'm excited to see a that they change that and b uh what the spells are yep yep so they have spells they have classes like fighter and wizard wizard does spells fighter also now does spells too um because everyone's a spellcaster now that's how they solve the martial versus spellcaster debate everyone's, no, a, no, everyone's that, a spellcaster now no good try but no, <laughs> I've I've looked at the playtest packet, and as a fighter, I can be a spellblade now. You can be, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are. <laughs> uh, so we are going to on this stream and what some of the most riveting live coding that you can get oh, yeah. in 2023. Take a look at updating our data models, adding support. Um, and maybe even building some stuff and getting it working will we get spells working by the end of the stream probably yeah, not. not will we have classes by the end of the stream at least a little uh, but as we code as we code you are free to watch along ask questions ask why we're making certain things suggest ideas uh, we if you have not seen the packet um let me get a link to it quick um but it is publicly available to everyone. Uh, I gotta find their blog real quick. Uh, Caligo, what are our plans so far for adding this support? Um, that's a great question, Cody. I you wrote a lot of words on it. 
What are our plans? Yeah, I did write a lot of a, a, a lot of thought. I, I brain dumped everything that I could think about for like how a spell data model might what it might need to support. Uh, leaning pretty heavily on what I know about 5e spells because they only gave maybe three or four examples in playtest packet two. Um, they also they said list. they also said just look at all these spells in the fifth edition SRD and assume they work the same. Um, so depending yep. on how you look at it, they either gave us three spells or like two hundred. Yeah. So I suppose that's fair then. Um. Yeah. Uh, as far as classes go, you're interested in more foreign documents, right? Um, oh boy, we're gonna make more foreign documents. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then we have some we have some plans to abstract uh, what we're calling powers or traits um, or passives. I think is what we ended up with. Oh yeah, you know what is one really critical down play of how I've done this stream setup. Huh. I can't go click into our Discord chats where I wrote up all my plans mm. of how I'm going to yeah, code this. that is a little bit unfortunate. Mm. I'm going um, to now open Discord in my other browser that I'm not streaming from so I can go. go load my notes. <laughs> uh, I was going to say I could DM it to you, but that also wouldn't help me at all. That also <laughs> wouldn't help me at all. Um, <laughs> So, how do we want to break down this work? Uh, okay, I might actually get it open. Uh, we... um, I'm happy to continue working on some common and shared data model chunks, so to speak. Uh, things like target, duration. Um, I had a different one that was another good one to do. Um, oh, like casting time or usage time. Okay, and then okay. those can be stitched together into a bigger, better spell data model. Sounds good. And I will start working on refactoring our traits to have more things once I find the notes on what we said we were going to do there. All right. So to catch up the audience with our uh, in-depth co design conversations, um, what we have right now, if we look at, say, um, a the dwarf lineage, a dwarf lineage has a handful of traits. And these traits can be things like Dwarven Resilience, you get resistance to po po poison as a damage type, and you get a uh, save advantage on poison as well. Um, it can also be things like uh, you gain certain health every time. This is similar to a DD class feature. Uh, but they can also be things like, if we go look at a background, um, we can be things like, as a scholar, you gain these options as talents, you get to pick one, and you get to choose either two additional languages or one tool proficiency or one vehicle proficiency from a set list. So we have these, we, these, this concept of like, these things can offer these traits, and these traits either innately give you something or let you choose something. We've decided we're going to break that up a little. Um, so instead, we're going to have a trait is something that gives access to a list of passive things, such as the, you know, you get this language, and then gives you access to a list of things you choose, such as choose from these two languages, as well as active things, such as this trait gives you access to spell casting, and this trait gives you access to choose three spells of your choice, and you can cast those spells. So we gotta, we have all those passive things right now. We're gonna refactor those to a new data model that trait can own and point to, and then we're gonna have an active thing we're gonna call a power, and traits will point to both as either you innately get it or you choose to get it, and then we can be afford to do things like um, I should actually open up the playtest PDF for. Um, reference but you know if i open it in my uh pdf you're off screen we can do things like we could yeah. emulate talents um talents as simply a list of traits 
some of which are things that you choose, some of the things that you just get automatically, and classes, everything is just traits. It's all traits all the way down. All traits all the way down. Um, uh, an example of this, if I can, this is a much bigger PDF than last time, um, is as a wizard, I can choose, I get access to certain features such as gain two cantrips of your choice from any circle spell list. So we're going to represent that as a trait, and then that trait is going to let the person choose two cantrips that they can cast. All right, I hope that answered your questions, Twalm. If not, I'm happy to talk more about it. Um, uh, confused Nin. When adding a spell class, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's probably smart. Uh, when adding a spell class to PF two E sheets, uh, it is independent of requirements. For instance, I can just add wizard casting to my sheet as like a type of casting. Um, I've recently been playing some PF two, and I thought this was really interesting how they did it. I haven't looked into their into their code of how they did it, but it is clever. I think our idea of what a trait is will allow us to do something similar in that a trait isn't necessarily tied to a class like or a subclass um it could exist in its own freestanding item or even attached to the actor itself so you could diy a spell casting trait on your actor which allows you to do basically what you're describing here um so if if your gm gives you a boon or something that would be like oh you can now cast heat metal once per day because you like to commit war crimes um <laughs> then you could add a trait of war crimes to your character sheet and then underneath that you would add the the heat metal spell and then perhaps the spell casting trait type or item type or whatever however we end up building that will have attributes like whether it's innate or you require spell slots or packed magic or spell progression modifiers that kind of deal um still pretty amorphous in our heads and one thing one bridge at a time yeah one thing i think we will always support is although say dwarven resilience automatically gives me certain things or lets me choose certain things and on my character sheet i can see that i got the trade language from fireforge and i got the ignan language from fireforge as well one was a choice, one was um, an innate thing. I can also go ahead and add a... Uh, I already have trade. I can add a language and have visual representation that this is something I add it manually and I can remove it so that you and your GM can cl help clarify what came from rules and how you built your character versus what did you add to your sheet. You might be a fighter and your gm's like you know based on you get struck by divine lightning and you get access to heal and you add heal to your sheet without coming from you know the cleric trait now you know how you got it and you when someone if you share your character sheet and someone else pulls it they know that was homebrew as it were i.e your gm knows that you didn't cheat whenever you built your character mm -hmm. Um, shark that walks like a man. What exactly is a trait? Any mechanical thingy? Otherwise not categorized. Um, yes. Probably... We're, our, our latest concept is that a trait is a bundle of things. Be they passive things or active things. Uh, so it's not exactly a mechanical concept in and of itself, although the playtest packet does mention and call things traits, if mm -hmm. I remember right. Yeah, we actually just got a question started. from Webmaster saying, why are we calling it a trait instead of a feature? So if I go open up playtest one packet, it's a lineage trait. It is a heritage trait. It is whatever. That's what we build. And now in playtest packet two, it is a class or subclass feature. I think in their head, they are considering these two concepts. I think on our end, we're like, at the end of the day, these are about the same thing, but we'll probably label it 
feat or feature or trait, depending on where it came from, just for connecting to the source material. Yeah. If we wanted to be uh, extremely verbose, but ultimately precise, we could call it a bundle of ch powers and passives. But could call that's it a, a bit trait verbose. feature. Oh, a feature trait. Mm, featured trait. A traitor feature. Traitor feature. There we go. We are very good at naming uh, as all developers. Naming are. is the most difficult thing about what we do. All right, so. So let's start doing some code. Um, yeah, sure. Everyone loves code. Um, I don't know how you show off code. Oh, there you go. Look I, at that. It's I, code. Yeah, I show off code by clicking the code. How do you show off code? Uh, I'm quite proud of how I showed off code whenever I was streaming. I used VS Code's live um, share, and I had a smaller window open on a secondary monitor, which I then streamed. Oh, that's a but it would good follow idea. me, so I still had my big monitor, mm. but the audience could follow it on a smaller format. It was it was pretty cool. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't think I have a way to let you share code on your end. So we're, that's I, fine. We are currently working off of... I need to go to the Black Flag read. No, this Black Flag content. Uh, we're currently working off of the Packet 2 Data Models um, branch. So as Calogo does work, he's going to push, I'm going to pull, and then uh, everyone else can see what's going on. Um, uh, I'm just going to make pull requests into this branch, I think. Okay, okay. I can do live pull request review. Everyone likes saying that too, right? Yeah, there's one up for you already. Go yeah. have fun. Yeah, people, and now everyone's quoting this, a similar quote. Um, there's two hard things in programming. Naming things, cache and validation, and off by one airs. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Cal goes free to tune me out unless I mention his name as he works on some of the spell stuff. I'm going to be working on uh, breaking the trait up into other things. So I'm gonna... We already have a power, which we talked about, but so we're gonna need to add a passive, which has some of the stuff that's already in trait. So if we go ahead and copy the power... Which is a data model. We're gonna call this a passive. And a passive can give us. Previously, we put this all under an innate object because we were trying to uh, support things, but we can just grab all this we already know a passive well no we said a passive we said we want to innately give access to passives or some action powers and we want to cho by choice give access to some passives or actions so really i do still want to move that you have that you passively have access to things like proficiencies and languages um that makes sense. Like our power, we know where it came from. Passives don't have a level, I don't think. None of our passives currently have a level or a cost. You might passively, no, you might innately gain access to a power. Passive should be these things. I don't know if we have prerequisites on passives. I don't think we do, because you just get them. Let's go look at the data. Prerequisite for a passive would be the prerequisite for the trait. Yeah, I think that makes sense, so uh, we can get rid of that. Let's add the trait that needs a prerequisite. After its name. Source. Um, why to save advantages having choices? Damage types. Uh, currently, our damage types are... 
similar things to save types in that they're like you could have bludgeoning damage or poison damage or fire damage um we were i don't we still don't have rules on what the damaging types are um they don't have rules on like slashing and things like that so right now it's just a really cheap way of using the same list but later on we will we actually have a save types that we should swap this to that is all of the damage types and then adding charm which is this dot 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 lets us expand previous things so like our proficiency types we can break down here's our tool proficiency types our weapon proficiency types our vehicle types but we can also have a all proficiency types that is just all of those previous ones expanded um good catch charm sounds like charm sounds like a condition yes Do you have a condition types we don't have a condition type right now um okay. I forget what exactly said you have a save bonus against being charmed, but it must have been one of the original lineages okay. and such. My guess is elf. Yeah, probably elf. It yep. wouldn't be dwarf. Magic elf ancestry, you have dwarf. advantage on saves against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. Okay. That's almost definitely related to a condition, but they have not released a list of conditions yet. They have not. Uh, speaking of which, elves don't need to sleep at all, which I just... I, 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 why not? Aren't you just jealous? I am like, jealous. I wish I didn't have need to sleep. There's, it's, it's an ongoing thing of like making a party of all elves, so you really just make the GM's life hell, because anytime you try and take a long rest, he has to figure out whether or not the rules mean that you still have to take eight hours, even though you get the benefit after four hours, or if you can just move on after four hours and course the rules are ambiguous about these things i gotta assume you can move on after four hours if you have a party that, of all elves that is probably how most gms would rule it yeah okay so back to our trait um we moved prerequisite there um we know that traits are going to need that level because when we have when we call them a feature we want to say this is a second level feature um something we talked about doing was extending trait to be feature extends trait which we might do but we're not going to do right now One thing that to mention for your common data models, we often repeat for things that are not documents already, that they want an ID, a name, a color, a source, a source ID, an image. We get a lot of those for free when we have a document such as the ID, name, and image, but I think we'll want a base data model that is for not documents that includes those things and a base document one that includes the additional color and sources and to all the 90 people watching along live if you have questions or suggestions feel free I should find some lo-fi uh Oh, that's Music. a good idea. Cre creative Commons. You got, you got Spotify? Oh, nope. Yeah. No. Uh, We're creative streaming. Commons. Um, Synthwave? Sure. Oh, this, one, this one's called Algorithm. I think that's an ideal name. Okay, now I gotta pipe it through OBS. Um, someone left comments, good comments, on the issue on the repo about the spell item schema uh, regarding how to store a duration of a spell. Um, storing it innately or internally as rounds is an interesting idea, and then using a getter maybe to format that into human readable text. 
Do you have any thoughts about such a thing? I assume JS has like a humanizer library, right? Where you can turn certain data types into like human readable strings that they take care of it for you. But either way, we can certainly do that. Uh, yeah, Copilot is work lurking nearby. Uh, like if I go into the next line, you can see it suggested something called builder info on the power, which is not what we want. Um, but you know, if I were to start, start typing something like, I don't know, uh, what else would a power possibly need? You know, um, let's just call it description HTML. It, it suggests uh, the field types based on what else is here of HTML field that's not required and not knowable. <clears throat> okay. Foundry Core might have some things that turn rounds into minutes. I think you're right. But I think it's based off of whatever the configured time of a round is. Is the VOD going to be available? Probably. It's at least going to be available for two weeks on Twitch afterwards. And we usually upload these things to YouTube, but sometimes we forget. So, you know. Yeah, get duration label. Oh, it's rounds and turns. Okay. All right, so we have some things that are innate, and builder info is currently our list of things that is chosen. So I think we're actually good there. But when we do innate, we now want to have a set field, and we want to have it be a set that holds either passives or powers. And those don't currently extend from the same thing. And normally I would do a foreign document field. And give it a type. Can I do it in such a way that I say only these two types are allowed? Let's look up the documentation. That's not the right screen. Probably make a new folder under system or just a top level file in system depending on how big it needs to be I'll do a folder helpers mm -hmm. um, I would probably just like how we make constants available at um, config.system.constants I would make yeah my initial thing is if it's not that big, make like helpers all uppercase dot mjs and do like constants. But if you want to do it as a folder and then bundle it up as a module and then include attach to that, I think that also makes sense. Yeah. disappointingly uh, our in fact it is disappointing our documentation does not say what to do so I need to go look into it so let's see our options are does the type actually matter doesn't look like it so we can just define this without the type say it's required and not and it is a black flag item but we don't care about what its subtype is so now we have a set a 
and we can always in our data preparation enforce it to be those. I tried to check Discord and I uh, that still doesn't work with our stream. Um, I'll, I will never break that habit. Okay, so this should, this feels straightforward and easy, like I didn't have to change very much, which feels maybe odd, but I'm sure I'll find out more I need to do later. Well, we do need a copy source ID here. I have a string field which has choices or custom. I'm sorry? Is it possible for me to declare a string field that has both choices and custom input? I don't believe so. Not nah, you'd have to write our own field type. Okay. But if it allows anything but suggests a list of choices, define the data model as without choices and then we'll present suggestions in the UI. That's fair. That tracks. We're going to need to make updates to our builder info to support this, but I think this should work. Possibly even without having broken what we already have. Let's find out. Ah, yes. Unsurprisingly, we have at least some errors. Is async data prep making for many workflow gotchas? Uh, so far, no, because we've built it from scratch with async. Um, and we're doing foreign document lookups, which is why we need that async. But all of our character sheets use async to get data. Um, yeah, really, it's I, I don't think we've stumbled into anything there. So now when we go, we walk through all the things the person has manually chosen for things like proficiencies, resistances, etc. We then walk through all the innate ones and grab the same. And then we walk through all the choices. The choices shouldn't need to change because we already load those from something else. So we just need to change these innate traits to rather than loading uh, directly off of each innate one, we need to look up the passive. We need to lo look up all the passives and load them. And later on, we'll load the actives, actions, powers, but. Uh, off, maybe off topic, but I want to create a module for a new commercial system. I will be contacting the author first, but is there any official path we need to follow? Or do I just need to get blessing from his publisher and show you when needed? Um, so for commercial systems in particular, one for all systems, if you're reproducing someone else's work, you're going to want to talk to them, make sure you have licensing, make sure you have permission. Some licenses let you use their content without additional 
permission, you're good to go. If you're looking to help them sell their content, that's definitely something you want to pitch them, explain to them. Presumably, someone's making money somewhere. Are you giving them all the money? Are you giving them your time for free? If not, you're going to need to come up with a contract with them about how much your time is worth, how much you're selling this product to them, how much of a cut per sale you want. <coughs> and then once that's done, not only are you going to need to email us at admin at foundryvtt.com or support at foundryvtt.com with that permission, you're also going to need to get a contract signed about selling premium content, how to get this up in our system, what those costs and terms look like, and then how the system works for you to be able to sell the content somewhere else, get a license key, and have a user input it. Definitely send us an email at support at foundryvtt.com and we have staff members who can walk you through that and guide you through the process. Good luck, by the way. Those are always big projects that take a while to work on. Oh, one thing that's occurring to me I need to do is when we load foreign documents, I'm going to want to load all powers and all passives. I also want to go ahead and move this to init at some point. So let me add to it. thing I'm going to make a do I want to merge those together or keep them separate we still don't know if a power is just an extended a passive for now we're going to keep them separate question from code 5 High level question, but I'm new to this system and the concept of system dev. I'm interested in getting into it though. What level automation does Black Flag aim to support? Pretty high. GM, GM friendly automation. Yeah. So my personal belief and what I hope Cal, I, I believe Calico shares is we should provide the GM the information they need while still letting them run the game the way they want. Um, for instance, when rolling an attack, it'd be great to display to the GM, or if they opt to do it publicly, what is, we, we want to sum up the d20 roll plus all the bonuses, and then we want to compare that attack against the defense and indicate if it hit or not. We also want to sum up all the damage to one EO total. What we don't want to do is, without the GM say, apply that damage. 
Instead, we want to stop there, let the GM actually decide if it hit or not. Maybe they want to fudge the rolls, maybe that there was a rule we missed, maybe there's homebrew that they're trying that, you know, changes up the things. They should be the ones that say whether or not it actually hit, and then apply the damage. Um, we want automation for things like, you know, if you roll a save and you have a proficiency on that save, you don't have to remember, it just reminds you or applies automatically. But we also want to be able to be like, actually, this doesn't apply here. You can disable that bonus without having to completely redo things. Uh, so that's the goal. But that's also the hardest possible goal of both automating things and letting people override it without harming each one. So we'll see what we end up with. That is definitely a big goal. You are right. Stunning strike. You're stunned until the end of your next turn. We don't talk about rounds. No, I think yeah, I think it's always expressed in turns. Unfortunately, TypeScript definitions won't be available anytime soon if at all for these features. Yep, we're writing in JavaScript. A lot of these kind of like opt-in things. Um, or if you mean the actual um, data model stuff, yeah, the old data model is also hard to do TypeScript. It is essentially us adding typings to JavaScript, but that in turn makes run it hard. Runtime typings. Yeah, it's yeah. runtime typings. So that then makes it hard to make statically typed typings for TypeScript. I would pretty, like, not, mm, I struggle to say this as a foundry dev, but if you're using TypeScript, you probably don't also need to be using data models. Hmm. I would probably generate the data model off the TypeScript bot definition. That would be ideal. I agree with you there. Foundry is, uh, once again, a weird use case because since it so heavily encourages community modules and macros, um, it's that runtime type support is excellent. That's why yeah. it's so great, so that you can, you can prove uh, that the data that's outside your control is probably sanitary. Um, which TypeScript is superb. It's excellent as a development. I work my day job in TypeScript entirely. Um, but I don't have to deal with a user coming in and running an arbitrary JavaScript macro and polluting the fuck out of my data. Yeah. So I, I definitely, but like, like say yeah if you have a typescript definition rather than writing your data model and trying to type it dynamically i would write your typescript definition and then generate a data model that gets loaded and run but i also don't use typescript so maybe what i'm saying is is impossible <laughs> TypeScript is stripped out with the builders, so it's never present during runtime packages. But 
you could certainly create a script or a, a plugin or something. I said certainly. That was an exaggeration. You could theoretically create uh, a plugin or something that that generates um, whatever out of a TypeScript interface. It's certainly a robustly typed like types are also anything that data models can do. TypeScript can probably also do. And so, going from TypeScript to data models is not a not a terrible concept. I gotta assume there's certain things like you know a foreign document field that doesn't make sense that isn't natively in TypeScript. But if TypeScript's like all languages I've worked with, you can write custom annotation property annotations and such to be like, okay, this is a TypeScript string field, but I'm annotating it as a foreign document ID of type ID only. And that's how you generate the data model. Um, right. Or conversely, yeah, write your data models and then someone has a script that generates a TypeScript model from it and you write your code with that and hope they match. I don't fully know. Yep. It's uh, an unsolved problem as of yet. It is an unsolved problem and luckily it's not my problem to solve. Look at that, we did it. We, what we got, uh, I mean, there's, okay, a couple things are still broken here, but like, we, we mostly got our, th uh, 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 it's loading good. So now the interesting thing is, uh, I'm gonna need, yeah, obviously that's not gonna load, is it? Um, for our trait form, I now need the trait form to be able to I need a new config for our passive, and we're, and we're going to make a config for the powers. And then I need the trait form to be able to have a list of passives and powers with the option of granting them innately or via choice. Easy enough. Please tune in for the next three hours as I accomplish that easy enough task. Is it too late to make a trait a document? Probably. I don't think it needs to be a document. Uh, it's, it's only ever owned by something else. It's only ever owned by other items, basically. Yeah. The thing. So no, we got. We're sticking with our. Uh, yeah, our design I think choice. we'll end up. We'll end up with a generic trait item type probably, but um, we haven't crossed that yet. So traits are going to keep their summary in advance, and we're going to end up getting rid of all these sections about stuff that now belongs on a passive, and we're going to instead render a list of passives and then later on powers. And then the configuration is going to continue to be JSON. Um, and then over in our passive form, we don't need two tabs. It's not that complicated, so we can get rid of the tabs. Um, we can keep the description and the field set. Uh, oh, we can get rid of the field set, I think. So we're going to move all of these up a level. that up out of the tab and then get rid of the other tab and now we've refactored that Now we gotta make a sheet for it. I put those under apps. OK, 
Calico, any opinion on if the form sheets should live under app slash forms or under sheet slash forms or sheet slash app slash forms? I'm really less. thinking. Go ahead. I think less is more. Yeah. In terms of folders. If you go to nested, it's just impossible to find things. Okay, okay. So you think it should be like sheets slash forms? Or even sheets should live under apps. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I think I want to move it all under sheets and get rid of the apps folder because we have sheets, we have templates, we have data models. I think that makes sense. Yeah, that, that tracks. Is a template ever not going to be used with an application? Yeah, no, I don't think it is. Originally, I had this idea that apps was going to be all the stuff not associated with documents, and Sheets was, but... Everything is related to documents. Everything's And everything <laughs> is an application, right? Well, yeah. our traits aren't documents. That's the thing. They're not documents. Uh, in that case, moving Sheets to instead be under apps might be, might be the play. I already did it. I already did it. Rest but did I break it all? Oh, absolutely. I also broke everything, I think, just now. I moved your helper function, your log functions into my helper functions. You should, I gotta go track them down. You should be able to find all for config system log, I believe. Yep. Just another thing that TypeScript would have helped me with here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's another thing WebStorm does help me with. WebStorm's actually very good at using consuming a JS doc and doing good refactoring. That's because JS doc is TypeScript under the hood. That's true. Um, so you want these helpers to be in config.system? I think that makes sense to me. Um, up to you, and if you want to put them under additional namespace under there, but I think like config system log probably should still work right yeah i'm just gonna spread helpers into system there's a small chance that we have a name collision there but i'm not too worried about it if our constants are always all caps we'll be fine and they are so far as, so yep Okie dokie, so back to what I was doing, um, we want to make a, we want to copy the trait form, we want to make a passive form. Yeah, I spelled that right, we don't need the ace editor. types and such as data list options we don't need to enrich we don't need to set up the JSON and editor live coding with Cody yeah uh, very funnily um, a company called Sourcegraph just announced their um, new product called the Cody AI. So you can ask Cody your coding questions to refactor your code. You can finally put me in a box uh, in your PC. That's ironic because all of your answers just come straight out of Copilot. I assume theirs do too. <laughs> all right, durations. We have a type, which is either instantaneous, a time, permanent, or special. We have a number of rounds, which is optional. <coughs> we have a special field, which is just a string field that describes end of caster's turn, end of target's turn, until the next full moon, whatever you want in there. We got That it. feels like a duration. We got a question. Any good resources on data models? I'm going to open it up and then drop it in chat. Um, 
it's a little hidden, but you can find it with our search. Um, but when we released version 10, we wrote a knowledge base article on what is data model, what does it provide, how do you use it, um, how does it interact with construction, how do you convert V9 code to V10, um, what all fields are available. Um, hopefully that's a good guide. Okay, this is all our update data. We update blah, blah. When we update the object, we don't need to do the JSON. We're going to go to the parent object. We're going to update the traits. Algo, I've encountered a question. Oh. So currently, in a trait, we have innate things like a proficiency. And we know the total list of proficiencies are configured at a system level. So when we do the character builder, we know that we can say, here's all the list of proficiencies, and we can use JSON to define like a sublist or values. That's not going to work with our new passive power system because the list of passives and powers is going to live on the trait itself. So I think I just need the trait to store the list of all available ones be, and then the JSON can reference that list. So the problem being previously a trait was pretty well defined and only they only ever provided values out of the constants and now a trait is not well defined correct um and a passive is also not very well defined there's not like a concrete number of passives because it's any permutation of constant correct i mean we, we will now know the total list of passives available across the world but we actually only won't care about the one that the trait owns so I need the trait to own passives. So actually, in my foreign documents, I can't even prepare the list of all passives and powers because they aren't documents. They are... Right. That makes sense. They're... Okay, so yeah, we want to... They're just like trait. They're not documents. Like traits are not documents. Yep. Just like traits aren't documents, we want the parent to have all of its passives owned. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, that tracks. A power... No, okay, so a trait might provide you a document. We could, we could augment that later. Yes, you're... Mm, yeah, a power is going to be a, do a document, but a passive isn't? Question mark? Because, like, a power is going to be something like a spell or an action from Fighter. And a passive is a mutation of the actor itself. So I don't think passives are documents, but powers are. That tracks. So, yes. We will know the list of all spells, but we might not... But we might also only have a list of, like, these are Fighter actions owned by the Fighter. Yeah, 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 that tracks, that works. Okay, cool. Okay. Solving problems, one line of code at a time. For anyone who ever thought system dev was easy, you were absolutely wrong. Yeah, you conned me hard when you pitched this idea to me. 
It'll be fun, he said. We'll we won't have any cruft from five E. We'll get to make all of our own mistakes. Yeah. Uh, and, and now I we get like, to make all sounds great. Yeah. And then I started and I'm like, where do I even start? Yeah, we get to make all our own mistakes, like I said. All of them. I said the thing. I said yeah, that all. I said that positively and confidently without to make you not realize that I was saying, Calgo, we can jump in this giant hole. Look how deep it is. <laughs> and then just keep digging. Because what else do you do in the giant hole? Calgo, this hole yeah, isn't even exactly filled true. yet. Exactly. How do I make my own better mistakes? See, the current the Indy 5e system is a 100-foot hole that's been filled in with dirt. And if you want to change something 50 feet down, that means you have to dig 50 feet of dirt, change it, and put it back. The Black Flake system is a 20-foot hole with nothing in it, and you jump to the bottom and start digging further. Except each playtest packet makes the hole deeper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was a 10-foot hole, and we filled the 10-foot hole, and it was a beautiful, clean 10-foot hole, and now it went, like, 30 more feet down with Playtest yeah, Packet 2. suddenly. Ah, oh, beautiful. Uh, All right, I'm pushing this up into a pull request. Just wait until they pivot some rule in a way that doesn't fit your architecture. We're prepared for oh, that. That's probably why we, we didn't fork D&D 5e. For instance, yep. if we had forked D&D 5e, we would have Inspiration. But Packet 2 delivered Luck, which is the replacement for Inspiration. But it lets you add up to, what, five points to your attack roll before you see the if it hit or not. Uh, or yep. let you spend them to re-roll the die. Be again, before you know if you hit or not. Uh, so that completely changes the whole workflow for dice, which would have been super annoying to do in D&D 5th edition. And it's yeah. still going to be super annoying for us to do from scratch, but at least we don't have to dig out but the it's current our dirt own first. annoying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, yeah. yeah. If you want to get involved in hole digging, this is an open source project. We're looking for, contrib for willing volunteers to be pushed in the hole. Um, and honestly, you don't even have to code to be helpful. Um, there's there's a lot of thinking that has to go on before we even get to like the coding of the JavaScript for the features, hence data model starting. Um, so like, if you have thoughts about what a spell is, like if you were to fundamentally philosophically distill, distill a spell into a machine readable data format, we want to hear it. There's a whole thread about it right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you have thoughts about what a, a class is, like fundamentally, or what kinds of actors should exist, for instance, do you want to see party actors? Do you want to see shop, like vehicles? Are those valuable actor types? Give the feedback now, because... The hole can only get deeper right now. Yeah, exactly. Um... And then, obviously, the most helpful form of feedback is not just, I want to see shops, but, like, what then what is, is a, shop? a shop? Like, define it for us and, and help us define the parameters, the acceptance criteria, if you will. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good call out. Um, now is a great time to establish people interested and in giving us thoughts on how things should work. Because I don't this even philosophy. play 5th edition. I'm just here this, to code. This fool had got himself in over his head and then had the nerve to come to these 5th edition developers, like me and Arbron. He was like, help, help. I don't know what a spell is. I play Too few discount magic, brand man. Walmart. I brand Walmart brand D&D. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> So if 13th Age is Walmart brand D&D, what is Black Flag? I want to say it's like Target brand. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that tracks. So we just have to define entities despite not knowing the future roles, right? Kind of. Right now we're building what they release, but there are things that we know they will never talk about, like the concept of that are VTT specific, like 
a party sheet, right? No physical book cares, has the problem of and solve and gives you like, here's how you list all your party members in one place for the GM. They give you a GM screen and you go write down everyone's AC there, there right? On a VTT, we have the op opportunity to do that kind of stuff automatically. But it's still really helpful for someone who is a GM and who plays these games to be like, this is what's really helpful for me to know about my party versus this is too much data. Please do not give me their entire character sheet in one go. Yeah, something, for instance, on that, uh, something, an idea that's rattling around in the back of my head is a, is a compact monster sheet. We don't have rules for monsters yet, but if we assume that they are roughly the same as 5e monsters, there's only ever like six or so buttons that you really want on a monster sheet whenever you're running them in combat. Um, and so having like a postage stamp sized monster sheet that you could use whenever you're actually running combat, as opposed to the full blown character sheet, which you would use for <coughs> editing and creating that monster, would be an interesting concept that would help GMs use combat with multiple different monster types as opposed to, okay, well, here's a goblin, so I'm going to have the big goblin sheet up all the time. And if I have hobgoblins as well, now my screen is suddenly eaten by all of these massive character sheets. Mm -hmm. So, now is the chance. Let, let your ideas fly. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Don't let your beams be memes. Okay, now we've gotten our four, our traits reopening up successfully. Uh, so now we gotta take a look at, say, like a heritage and copy over its code for managing traits so traits can manage innate things. Speaking of massive character sheets, the PC sheet is taller than my browser window. Yeah, I'm, mm, I'm sorry, I have a huge monitor, so that's what I'm doing by default. Um, it's definitely large. I did not open it on a smaller monitor until just now. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, this is why it's good to be open source. Yeah, good call out, Gentle. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that. What if he fixed it and submitted a PR? That would be ideal, actually. Abandon, abandon PF2, Gentle. Come to us. Gentle. Okay, sure. We got him. We, go. we got. We got another one, boys. <laughs> Did you say you opened a PR yourself? I'm about to. Okay. Uh, there's one that's currently open for the um, target schema. Oh, four days ago. It's almost like I've. Uh, yeah, it's almost like I've been doing my day job. Uh, speaking of which, uh, have we released um, Dev One yet? No. Why would, why would you say something like that? That's not on the way. I yeah. Do have a notification. Yeah, as of uh, like 20, 30 minutes ago, we have released Development One of Foundry uh, and featuring real cool things such as Hot Reload. Um, that means. Although I can't use it right now for um, Black Flag because we're on V10, that when we get to V11, we'll be able to do things like update our CSS and see it update in real time without refreshing or reopening apps. Yeah! As opposed to unattractive reload. Yeah, thank you, Nath. Nath, how was your stream? Session zero. Hagel, thank you for like the detailed like examples of different data that this could be. This is high quality work. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I was they were all comments, and then I was like, this is stupid. I should put this in the pull request instead. They would be unit tests, but we haven't gotten that far yet.
you didn't put our unhelpful comments on the top of each one. How am I supposed to know it's distance unit if I don't have a comment saying the support at distance units? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'll get right on that, boss. Yeah, thanks. I assume later on, um, with area of effect, we're going to tie them to the types of measured templates. There should be a mapper, yeah. Okay, so you define a general data schema that others can use. Some things are required or not based on if it's a certain type. Um, I think, I don't know if we can do it in V10, but I'm pretty sure in V11 we're actually able to write things such that we can require it based on subtype. Um, That's not. Okay, cool. I don't know if we can do that in V10. I would have to check. Um, but for I that, didn't see anything in the docs about it, so I was. Our sure. docs are pretty sparse of the topic, to be fair. Yeah. Um, whenever I looked at core at cores uh, required field, it was definitely boolean only. So that was as far as I got on that investigation before giving up. If, if we can't do it in V11, we sh it's certainly a good feature to add. We're being able. You know, I'm sure TypeScript people would love to hear me say, I would love to have conditional models and validation based on uh, runtime values. Uh, actually, that's not the hardest thing in the world for TypeScript to pull off. <clears throat> I guess the other way we could have done this is like, here's, the problem is it's like, one block is required if it's AOE, others are required if it's not this thing. And that's, yeah, I think this is the best way to express that, so. Yeah. It's really self. If it's self, then like nothing else matters. If it's not self, then something else has to matter. Okay, um, for your type, you have a choices where you use lines and not commas oh whoops whoops yeah i'll leave it i'll leave a suggestion what is that how typescript does it yeah it's an or mm. kind of thing uh oh i okay the pr linter is working and leaving comments on lines which is really nice Yep, it's all stuff that you have, because I guess you haven't set up ESLint in your IDE yet. No, I sure haven't. Um, <laughs> all right. I wasn't going to call you out on it, but since you called yourself out on I called stream, myself out There you go. Um, Cool, I got to ban someone. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay, so that PR is approved. I still see their, their comment, though. Uh, on my screen, it's all crossed out. Do I have an additional way to remove that message? Okay, there, others there don't go. see the comment. Yep. Oh, we got Drentle up in the PR, yeah! Okay, 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 thank you for including an image. Um, that is reasonable. Uh, yeah, that's pretty easy. Thank you, Drentle. Oh, you just noticed. 
Grand Hall, I'm about to merge this one. Did you just notice? Oh, the abilities aren't even. Eh, it's fine. Feel free to open another PR. I'm merging this one. unhelpful comments? Yeah, we do. Okay, now, now that I've resolved that and reviewed PRs, I'm going back to uh, updating the trait form to have the cool stuff I want to have. Alright, I updated mine. You're welcome to merge that bad boy. That's not my right PR. Boom. Merge. Don't forget to pull your branch. Now I get these hot changes and merge rentals things into this branch. this to our activator See, Drentil, see, even, even tiny changes can have unintended consequences. The character sheet will get a redesign at some point when we actually see what Cobalt Press does for their character sheet. Um, so don't, I'm not too worried about minor issues here and there, but, like, if we can keep it nice, cool. Keep our hole clean, you know, no litter. The cleaner it is now, the easier it will be to redo later. That's for sure. Why is in.json empty? Because I was in a rush when I initially made this um, and did all my localization in line. We have someone who is working on getting that all pulled out into proper localization files. Uh, they just haven't finished the work yet. Um, I should, we should check back in how they're doing. Um, cat. <laughs> I can probably just copy all. All right, why? Well, there we go. I could probably copy just all the code from trait crate and rewire it to be passive crate. Whoever just gifted a bunch of subs, thank you very much. Uh, it is very funny that we bought, got both um, Nath and Matt, uh, who are two staff members. <laughs> what are the odds? Rigged. Rigged. You know, I, I've been on most streams, either moderating or attending. I still have yet to win a Foundry license. Can you believe this? It was funny. I got one once. It was, it was rigged. <laughs> All 
All right, we said on our passives form we were going to save all this upstream to a passives object. That might still makes sense to me. It's not system passives though, because we're not a document, it's just passives. And the site has one too, it's rigged. <laughs> Trying to alphabetically sort the keys of our data models that I'm making, by the way. Okay. That is a rule that we have described, but it is pleasing to me. That's fine by me. So winner, how could one win a license? Good question. On most of our Foundry update streams or, you know, like changelog streams, we'll generally gift a couple, maybe two or three Foundry licenses. Uh, for development streams like this, sometimes we do it. For Black Flag, we haven't so far. Maybe we will in the future. Who knows? Uh, it's more likely that we'll probably, like, give away Black Flag copies at some point. Um, who knows? It depends on how that shakes out with Cobalt Press. Um, but uh, yeah, keep watching our streams and you have a chance to win free licenses. Yeah, Swalm says peril of using active and passive as nouns is in you get active forms and passive forms. That doesn't mean what they suggest. Yeah, that's fair. We we were struggling on like the names. We certainly didn't want to use action as a like class name because it's like you have actions are also like this is one action. This is a quick action. So we used power for that. Passive was hard. Like we had a couple other name choices, but we went with passive because it's like this is something you passively have about your character. Um, and doesn't have, like, there were a couple other options, but they were all concepts elsewhere. Uh, naming things is always hard. I'm back. Welcome back. You guys might see a Kali doing, doing laps and pacing behind me. She's fine, but the world is ending. She just wants me to know. Oh, thank you to whoever gifted me a tier one sub. Now most most of the core staff have gotten one. I got a subscription badge. Look at that. I gotta say, whoever thought I, you know, whoever watched me like in 15 minutes shunt out a little bit of a class last time, or like, wow, this is gonna we're gonna get a lot done this stream. Here we are, like. 
an hour and a half in, and I'm still refactoring oh, yeah. data models. Uh, I've, I've made a duration data model. Congratulate <laughs> me. It has good three fields on it. Good job, good job. Only an hour and a half, uh, half an hour per field. It's awful distracting it's, to ask, answer people's questions and, like... Yeah, it's yeah. your guys' fault that we're not productive. Yeah, not yeah. It's a draft. It's not done yet. I need to create some examples. At this point, uh, I'm going to be happy if I get passive creating done. Copilot also created some formatter functions for us, so, you know, that's and... that's something. And we truncate the name if we need, and we truncate the description if we need. And uh, bada bing, bada boom. Does Copilot also have noticeable style opinions? It tends to follow whatever style it sees in your code. Which, when you're shifting styles, is usually the wrong thing. But, you know, that's how it be, just like humans. Yeah, it... For stuff that it doesn't have an example of in your code, it it uses what's probably the most common in in the wild for that so, language. Yeah. So, for example, if anyone is looking at the draft PR I just opened, there's two helper functions. One of them uses a switch because it is an obvious use case for a switch. Um, the other one. I personally was debating whether or not I wanted to convert it into a switch based on the condition of true and then give it rounds greater than or less than according to the logic it needed instead of just a bunch of ifs. But Copilot wasn't smart enough to generate a suggestion with that. So I went with the if and it's fine. It's just more verbose. Yeah, because JavaScript does allow logic and case statements, right? Yeah, so the, the trick is to use switch true, and then as long as case matches true, it'll be fine. Mm. It'll, it'll, oh, yes, I know, hi. Hello, pupper. This is Zoe. Hello, Zoe. That's a, that's a long suit. Oh, very, yes, she has a very, very long snooter. Very upset at the world. The world is ending. Okay, okay. These are good helpers. Um, I hope you like that I'm using dev mode. I did like that you're using dev mode. Okay, so now if I uh, refresh and open up Scholar and open up Scholar proficiencies. Um, Where's my add button? I forgot to put in my add button. Each has passive. Boom, 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 boom. If I'm the owner, I should see a create add button. Am I not the owner when it's a compendium? That's not true, because here I have the add button. But I guess that's the document. Oh! Yeah, by the time we're in a trait, the trait doesn't have an owner, because it's not a document. So we can't use that check. Um, we would have to create an owner by passing that in our context data. And we just pass, do they own the parent object? All right, so now we have one and 
this.object.passives is undefined. That's because we didn't define it on the schema. So now we're going to add passives. And powers. Very good. We can type these, which I might not, might not even be a thing. I'm no longer sure it's a thing. We'll do it just in case it's a thing in the future. Something that we write. Passes at that point a set that makes sense. Do we make traits? Go to our background. Traits is an array field. It's an embedded data field of trait data models. We should probably copy that. Also, we don't need this initial load to the array. That's already the case. So over in our trait again, we should probably copy that rather it, they're not foreign document fields anyway. I don't know why I did that. Um, so we're just going to copy this whole thing. And this one is going to be a passive data model. Input. And this one's going to be a power data model, which I need to refactor and call a data model, not a data type model. What's a function initial do uh, for data models that lets you set the initial value of something? Uh, for instance, in our level, we say it's a minimum of one and an initial of one. Um, for things like color on some objects, such as background, we can actually use code to do a random color um, using this little uh, boy here where we turn it into a HSV color and then grab the CSS value of it. Um, so you can actually do pretty complex initial values of things. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Create all right, familiar all right. has a duration of instantaneous, but the familiar created is permanent-ish. Ish. Is the spell's duration better described as instantaneous or as permanent? The spell itself is instantaneous. Well, the casting of it is... Well, okay. no, the casting of it takes 10 minutes. Oh. Or an uh, hour, actually. In which case... But... The, no. the effect is an instantaneous creation of a familiar. We'll go with that. Fuck it. Yeah, because you don't maintain concentration on familiars, right? That's correct. You normally there are some. Go ahead. You normally, for duration of a spell, care about how long do you need to concentrate for, right? Normally, yes. There are a couple of notable exceptions because, of course, there are. Um... So, um, yes, it just returns a string lit or numeric literal at the end of the method. Question though, should concentration be annotated under duration or under component? 
components where it currently is. Hey, thanks for the raid of uh, 45 people to watch us live code Black Flag. Welcome. It's riveting. Um, oh boy, they have their own emotes. I'm, I'm feeling killed with love. They are apparently the army of chaos. Welcome. Where are you guys from? Okay, so I had an air, and the air was on passive create and trait form 148 um, because I reference system still. Yeah, I just didn't convert this method at all. Oh, I partially converted it. They love Foundry, that's all I need to hear. I love you guys for loving Foundry. Something I did in here is Hello Kaka. It's a, he says we're his favorite devs. I'm I'm honored. Honored. Um I look at my passive data model again. What are we up to, Kaka? We're working on Black Flag. Well, could we be up to? We're uh, mostly defining data models. Um, we have d hour to happen. We have defined data models and added nothing else to the system. Um, Sometimes it'd be that way. On the other hand, this is more than we've done in a little bit, so it's something. All right, whatever you can, you don't need more, more examples. All right. I actually don't know if we need a source on Passives. Special. Uh, anybody who knows 5e, give me a spell that has like a what, what, what you would describe as a special duration along the lines of uh, until their next end of next turn or something like that. that have that and I don't think any spells really do maybe fear shield shield works shields great perfect thank you oh man there's so many instances of the word shield in this document Object set's not a valid choice. Why is object set not a valid choice? For proficiencies, which are defined as set. Because we require proficiency. 
Christians. Jeez. Is chat the new chat GPT? Is that what they mean by chat GTP? It turned out it was Twitch all along. Oh, that's yeah. a terrifying thought. That is a terrifying thought. Twitch codes, except it's the world's, all of the world believing everything that they say. I would represent that as rounds one. A special string of until the start of your or start of your next turn. Cool. I want to use a set. My set is giving me errors that weren't occurring when the trait had the set. And I don't understand why. Um... Mm, it's only on this one. Probably because we don't have good submit data to find. update for those of you who are interested. She has taken shelter from the end of the world under my desk. Okay. Huh. Somehow we ended up with data that were the, res the first resistance is an object set. That probably was because of a previous code. So if we create just a brand new trait we add a passive. We can get brand new and exciting airs. That's the same air. Asking, is there a spell that lasts till the end of your next turn? The only one that I can come up with off the top of my head is the infamous cantrip, um, whose name I really can't even remember. It was so bad. Um, the one where you point at somebody and you get advantage on your next turn against them. Uh, That's a cantrip? Called? Yeah, it's. True laughable. strike. True strike, thank you. Yep, that one lasts until the end of your next turn. Do we know if True Strike's in this? I hope they change it. Oh, a couple other cantrips do too. Chill Touch. Uh, if the target's undead, has a disadvantage on you, a disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the end of your next turn. I think it's pretty scattered whether or not an effect will last until the beginning or the end of your turn or their turn, and that's a little bit frustrating when it comes to code, but we'll figure it out. In the name of balance.
You know, I like the idea of the JS set field, but boy, if it, is, if it isn't annoying to have to work with some arrays and some sets and set isn't actually like serializable. Yes, agreed. Foundry adds some things to its prototype though to make it more array-like. That's true. And we have successfully, by swapping from a set to an array, managed to actually add it to our list. Um, and then if I re-edit this, uh, we don't actually render it. Why? Let's de uh, dev mode dump and take a look at system, traits, new trait, <sighs> passives. We don't add it to the passage list. Oh yeah, we can't call update on Gotta call the parent. We're nesting so much data, Caligo. Tell me, tell me what your woes are. So we have a background such as Scholar. That's mm -hmm. a document. You can yep. call dot update on a document. Yep. We then have a list of traits. Inside a trait, we can call the parent and tell it to update its list of traits, as in that and and. That's a field on a document, so we're good. Fair. Once we're in a passive, we're a list of passives in a trait we're, that's we're, a, in a list of traits. We're that's an on array a item. Oh, no. So yeah, we that's are. not going to work. I mean, it is going to work. You got to give it a UUID. Give, give it something. Otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the ass. I remember with advancement, we suffered similar problems. And in the end, it's easier if you give every item and an id and storm as an object yeah or map yep um i'm also wondering if we're going to run into issues in v10 with this approach because in v11 we just as of dev one released the ability to edit embedded items that are more than one deep and things like that uh, in V10, I might not even be able to, uh, with the V10 database scheme structure, update an embedded item on an embedded item. I might be blocked from doing that update. It's not in an item, though. Traits are... The passives on a trait, which is on an item. It's an embedded... Yeah. On an embed... Yeah, I guess it's not an embedded item, though. It's just mm -hmm. an embedded... So... It's really just another data. Oh, it's so much data. This was a, um, this sounded like such a good refactor, and now I'm starting to regret it. It's probably a good idea for us to make a class that's like embedded data chunk. Embedded with, data chunk. With like a helper method of update on it, like a pseudo document class. Okay. And then both powers and passives can extend to that. That's uh, probably true. Um, for now, I guess I'm going to have to call the object's parent and call update. How do you update that one item in the array and not any of the other ones? I do have an ID on each passive or trait. So I, oh, okay. find, I find, say, the trait by ID and replace it in the array. And then update the entire thing with the new array with the now replaced new trait. Yep. Uh, yep. This is going to be fine. So we call. We update this. This. This object is the trait. We update its list of passives with the new passives that we just added. And then we update the trait's parent, which is the item. 
with that update. I hope you're cloning things before you're doing any of this mutation. Well, luckily, this is a great operation, but... Um... We actually need the update to be. No, we're good. This this should work. Prop. No, no, no. This isn't. Good. We need to update the traits list on the parent, such that it has the passives. Ugh, I'm running out of brain juice. smart <laughs> can you imagine like the end of a two-hour stream hey guys thanks for watching along i spent all this two hours uh writing code i'm gonna throw out because that's the development cycle it is indeed the development cycle i could have made so much more progress if i just focused on adding classes <laughs> you did focus on adding classes that's the that's thing, the thing. <laughs> but i focused on it at the uh downstream data model level um I I could have just started adding like shim top level models and create it down and I would at least have visible progress, right? Yeah. As a rule of thumb from Nat, Nate Butt, uh, when deciding how important it is to get given code pattern right, I think how hard it would be to remove a place it later if I get it wrong. If it's trivial, you don't have to spend much time thinking about it. If it requires ground up refactory, you better get that right. Yeah. That's a, that's a fair rule of thumb. I think you're going to have more luck if you store them as objects, keyed by ID. Probably. Um, you can use the built-in deep update in Foundry's merge object to not have to worry about messing with the array at all. Yeah, that's probably the better move, and I, I think your idea of defining a pseudo-update so that a trait knows how to update itself and a passive can call the parent's update and not worry about having to update the parent's parent makes a lot of sense. Uh, that said, we're almost at the end of this stream and I'm not going to try to bite that off with our remaining five minutes. Yeah, uh, that is definitely fair. <laughs> Did you get uh, your changes? Any uh, anything else to review before we sign off and defeat? Yeah, duration data model exists. Okay. okay. Um, and a couple of helpers. Well, at least we got some code at it. We got a PR from the community, and we've really shown how hard all this is. So let's talk this about stuff. this is the stuff that the bot can't do. Yeah. Yeah. Get, no matter how much AI coding you have, you still can't be like, OK, please, given given this PDF, please um, come up with a game plan for how to structure all this in a modular way, making it easy for data entry and homebrew. Uh, Swalm asks, is it because it's a set in the data model that updates can't target underlying array indexes? Um, we the do. The problem is the array itself. It's always sketchy to interact with an array by index because you're relying on the order of the array remaining the same. Um, and the built in update functions for Foundry documents have a bunch of logic around merging objects already. That makes it probably less work to do it if you yeah. store it as an object as opposed to an array i think cal goes right that storing on a background such as scholar storing a map of id to trait and then in each trait storing a map of id to passive 
lets us then update. And we can actually call the scholar update and give it just, just the ID of the trait and the ID of the passive and it will merge it in place. Whereas right now I have to grab the whole array, find what's changed, replace it and try to update the whole array on the parent document, which again, one nested deep, I have to find the trait in the, I have to find the passive and the array on the trait and I have to find the right trait in the passive on the background, which is, and then I have to build correct new arrays for all of this and then submit that to the scholar, which is why I'm struggling. Um, but once we get through this data model refactor, what the exciting things we get to do next are define things like if we look at the black flag packet, let's look at the fighter first because he's a little more straightforward. Now that we have now that we will have refactored this and I had hoped to get to in this stream, but we're not going to, is we'll be able to define things like our first level fighter action. Uh, that gives us w a choice of one of the following actions. So they're going to be power. So aim is going to be a, act a power. Uh, and as a power, it's going to say, well, yeah, as a bonus action, you take the time to increase your next attack. Um, double your PB for that attack roll. Is that a passive? Is that a power? I don't actually know right now. I think that's probably more of a passive, isn't it, Calico? That's uh, power. Okay, Calgo. definitely power, especially because this is gonna be. It costs is an there action. A resource? No, not for fighter actions. Oh, okay, got it. But if we look yeah. at say, um, ooh, somewhere in here we have fighter like stunts. Um, here we go. If we look at stunts. Stunts give you access to three. Yeah, three stunts of your choice, and those are powers such as Arcing Strike, which is cost one resource point, um, called a point. Uh, it has a prerequisite of your two-handed weapon that deals slashing damage, and then it action, its power is when you deal damage, you also deal half damage to a different target within five feet of you. So we'll be able to set up a trait that we'll call a feature called stunts, We'll be able to say it's a third level feature uh, uh, belonging to the Weapon Master subclass. And we'll say you are able to pick, we'll be able to define all of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine powers and say pick three. And it'll show up on your character sheet as your three actions or stunts that you can do. That's the goal that we've been programming for for the last two hours, and we are slightly closer and need more refactoring to do. Uh, will we do a follow-up stream? Don't know. Um, can you follow along without us streaming? Yes, we have a Discord channel uh, in the Foundry Mothership where you're free to throw thoughts, see what our progress is, grab our latest builds. Uh, we also have a development channel in the league where if you want to get involved in actually working on this kind of thing, we'd love your input and time. Um, I don't know when the goal of having this all implemented is. It's certainly not going to be, you know, a week after packet two that we're already there. Is it going to be next week? Probably not. I'm at Gary Con a lot of this weekend. Uh, but hopefully before packet three, we'll have packet two done so you can start choosing your spells and things like that. Packet three should be dropping things like monsters, hopefully. So you actually have things to start fighting. And that's when we're going to start looking at how do you roll dice and build a chat card and then apply that damage some of the automation. Packet four is I think then when they come through and they flush out some of the rules, like how do you roll a skill check? How do you do some of the other things? How do you roll initiative? And I think that's when you'll actually be able to sit down and have a proper adventure. And that's when they're aiming for the Kickstarter to go live as well. Um, so thank you all for attending. Thank you all for the 68 people who stuck through and watched live as we code it live. I'm still riveting riveting content top tier content they probably came from the synth wave uh creative commons music uh 
Calgo, any parting words? Uh, help. Help. They say it's fun. <laughs> what kind of community have we built? Um, the perfect kind, I guess. The perfect yeah. kind. All right. Well, go enjoy development. If you if you if you test that development one of Foundry, make sure you take a backup, or even better, just create an entire new data path folder and don't don't load your live games that you're playing for your, with your friend for two years. Do maybe go spin up a one shot or whatever and try out development one. There's yeah. some development focus features like hot reload. There's some user focus features like um, I probably should know what we did in this uh, thing. Um, Wow, these are mostly development related. We got performance improvements for the canvas. We've updated how tokens and synthetic actors work so that they update easier, which is probably would help with the problem we're looking at now. Um, we got hot rate load um, and we got some teasers of what we're going to do next time for uh, some more setup screen, beautiful beauty. Um, yeah, thank you all for attending. Uh, we'll see you whenever we do the next stream.